Welcome to my channel, The Adventure of Siberia. I am Siberia, and today I am showcasing technically a work in progress, but almost complete. Check this out. So, as you guys seen on uh, one of my latest episodes, um, I did a project which was a concept um, chain driller and I did a small grid version of that and uh, let's see here let's go ahead and get my character over here and uh, do an F10 and uh, pull him out really quickly so it was this guy don't ever blueprint things from a subgrid or else you get that issue but yeah, here it is. We, I worked on this guy here. I ended up doing the the dangling jewels truck here with the trailer, and um, you know, it's got that chain aspect to it um, that you can uh, you know mine with it. So let's let's go ahead and turn on the drills. Hey, you guys seen these on a previous video? So we release the hinges. Uh, turn on the sorters. I think they're on right now. Yeah, they are. Um, advanced rotor drill lock the other way so we need to reverse it and then go and it'll start doing its thing right and then these are the lights and you turn them on and off let's keep them on so anyways long story short we've seen this whole concept here right you can check out the video uh top right right now and you can catch the link if you want to check out this uh whole mining process but this process ended up bringing me to uh, get curious enough about making a rover that was large grid in that style. And uh, right now I'm about to do a test on this and uh, we're gonna lower it. I believe we're on top of some, I think it was some iron or something. Um, last I measured, this thing goes down to 117 meters. So let me just go ahead and jump down here and start getting it going, because this takes a while. So let's get it started and I'll talk about it as I'm doing. So here we are. So <clears throat> what I want to do first is look at my controls here. So both these are the rotor locks and the, the inertia tensioners. So I'm going to go ahead and release the lock. So you see it moving a little bit. That's just the chain itself kind of settling in. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the inertia tensioner now. And um, the rest here are all basically the rotors and things like that. Um, so here's the power, the, the reverse, and then this is what stops it. And I believe this down here is the, the one on the drill itself. So let's go ahead and turn these on and go ahead and start lowering. Did I get the right? No, that's not the one. So it's got to be this one. And reverse. There we go. Now it'll start doing that. Um, so what I like to do here, and let me jump into my spectator camera again while I leave my character in the buttons there. So what I like to do here is this rotor, it needs to create a little bit of clearance before you start wanting to spin it, which is my number seven on my bar here. And uh, what that does is it, as it goes down, it, it kind of just creates a bigger gap on the surface there making a bigger hole uh, basically my idea with this is and i have not fully set this up and um hopefully you guys want to join me for this it's going to take a bit but hey i'd love to talk about these things because it's uh fun it just creates different types of rovers different styles of you know this game's all about creativity so here we go so as this thing is mining it's going to take a while um, we're gonna let it do its thing and I'm just gonna show you guys around a little bit the rover and this is what I got so far So let's go ahead and go to the main bridge here. We'll start up here, right? So my idea here was just to create a multi like a big crew Kind of a rover like there's a big crew that lives here that works here. This rover's designed to uh, You know just roam around a planet or a moon kind of like we're here. We're in Triton right now and uh it just collects ore and processes it. And then on the outside, we have a couple of ships and I'll show you those once we get out there. And you know, we fill them up and you take them up into space wherever your mother ship is or your main base is or something like that. It's kind of the concept. 
So these are lights. Uh, everything's, you know, set up over here. I still got to do some stuff with my LCDs as per usual. I never do that until the last minute, but we'll get to it. Um, yeah, so this door opens here. This is the bridge, like I said. And over here you have a kitchen area where the crew can eat and uh, sit down and chill. And on this window, you can actually see the progress there of the mining driller. So it's kind of cool. You know, you're kind of chilling over here, having your coffee. You can like push V and see what's going on. And that's what's happening over there. Um, I think one of the things that I need to do Oh no, the sorters are on, so they're spitting out stone. We'll be fine. Okay, so let's keep on going. So, it's a mirror image on both sides on this rover. They're symmetrical, but you get yourself a little bit of a hallway. This is an airtight area as well. You have an H2O2 here, so you can refill your bottles, a survival kit, so you can refuel yourself. Um, eventually, this cockpit here, this flight seat, will be the same as the other side, and I only have that other side set up to do the drill right now, but we are going to do a... Uh, a copy on this side as well and uh, there are some LCDs right here and I plan on doing uh, a script related to mining somehow and also one that uh, maybe like an easy easy inventory script or something like that but the whole rover is kind of catwalked around you can go down here and go into the hangar bay area so the hangar bay is pretty spacious. Again, it is airtight. So let's go ahead and close that door just so you guys can see it. And I kind of figured an area where you can work. You come over here, you grind a few of these shelves, you get some parts and you fix or whatever you got to do over here. You fix a, a ship that's parked in here or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see here. That's the lights. Uh, and this is the vent. So there you go. Everything's airtight in here. We're good to go as well. Uh, we aren't trained, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, you can, let's pop out over here and take a quick look at the progress of the drill. And as you can see, it is wobbling around, doing its thing, and it's still going. And it's just going to keep doing that for quite some time here. I have it set to really slow. I think I have it set to like 0 0.30 on that rotor coming down. So let it do its thing. Um, so yeah, we were over here. So if you come towards the downstairs area, you have two options. So you can take this elevator. Let's take that. So you can come down to the ground level. There's one on the opposite side as well. Underneath here, we have a rover um, that you can fill up with uh, you know, some ingots, take it to a local base somewhere around here, that kind of a vibe. And uh, this guy, there's a button, where's it? Right here. And there you have it. And it lowers the rover and you get the gist. I'm not gonna pull it out because you just unlock it and you go. But you know, you're at ground level here, you can see what your drill's doing, and so on and so forth. Let's get back on this elevator and uh, come back up. But yeah, it's pretty cozy. If you run out of uh, hydrogen and such, you can just click the button and things are good to go, you know? That was kind of one of the ideas here. Imagine a bunch of engineers working, running around, you know, you got a couple of guys over here like calling out, oh, the chain's wobbling too much, slow it down, you know, that kind of deal. Uh, some programmable blocks and timer blocks, which I plan on using here shortly to set some things up, mostly on the drill. Um, but like I said, right now it's still a work in progress. So um, on the side of the main bridge here, this is your entryway. There's plenty of protection turrets on top there still and everything. So you can come into the main bridge through here, which we've already seen. So let's get back out there. And... Um, you know, and you can also walk on the catwalk here all the way out to the front of the rover. There's a ladder and you can just climb up if you need to. But here it is as far as details, what it looks like. Got my typical skull and bones going on over there. The adventures of Siberia. But yeah, this rover's fully equipped. You got everything you need. You got hydrogen engines. It's got reactors. It's got uh, uh, oxygen farms. It's got solar farms. It's got everything it needs, really. Um, I did set up this antenna um, so uh, that if we want to run uh, some remote control vehicles mainly uh, you can pop this up. basically when it's parked you can just uh, you know it's just doing its thing you can maybe communicate with your uh, space base up above or something like that that'd be kind of cool I kind of wanted to have that vibe um, I didn't want it to just look like a rover I also wanted it to look like a base uh, so, I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below, uh, 
what kind of ideas would you have? It's still a work in progress. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, plenty of hydrogen here so you can refuel these ships. But, and here they are. They're just a, a little cargo ship. I put some Gatlins on them just so they have a little bit of defenses in case they get you know, pulled over on the way to space. But they are uh, capable of getting out into orbit. Uh, carry a load. There's a large cargo container on there. There's plenty of hydrogen uh, thrusters down here. And I left plenty of room for you to add more if your load's a little heavier than intended or something. So you can always be okay with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drill from over here once again. Everything's working fine. Everything is still going down. Um, I believe we passed the iron. Let's take a look really quickly. No, we're still going, right? We haven't passed the iron yet. Nope. Let's see. HUD. I don't know. I might have missed it. I don't know. I might have just... Whatever. The point is, we get it. <laughs> Anyways, um, the other section of the, the rover here is uh, once you get out of the main co uh, control room for the drill here, you can just catwalk your way up here. And uh, this would be the crew quarters where the crew can rest, you know. This is where they can use uh, the restroom. There's a shower on the opposite side, you know, four bunk beds. I figured a crew of eight, maybe, you know, that, you know, four sleeps during the day, four sleeps during the night, kind of like that kind of a vibe. Um, I don't know, I'm probably going to put a cool little blueprint of the, the drill setup or something. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, maybe just the, a blueprint of the rig itself kind of like stretched out. That might be cool. Um, but yeah, this is the whole setup that I have here with this rover. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoy it. I got a little bit more things I want to do to it, obviously. I did put two big thrusters because it is kind of sluggish. It's a, it's a heavy ride, you know. Um, as far as production, let's get to that. I did forget to mention that. We do have two refineries. Um, both sides are equal, of course. We have a refinery with yields. Uh, we have an assembler on each side, a master and the help. And uh, we also have two large cargo containers. Uh, yeah, I felt that was enough for a rover this size. You know, two large cargo containers filled with ingots, you know, where you have two little ships flying back and forth, carrying it out into like a main space base or something like that. You know, I think that would be plenty for you to do a lot of work out in space. So that is my idea with uh, this design change railer here, but let me clear my HUD and also um, let's go ahead and get rid of this weather. Make things a little clearer just for the video's sake here. I am in creative, so this is definitely not built in survival. Um, but yeah, as you can see, everything is working fine. Everything is rolling down. You know, the chain is nice and stretched. As you can see, it's not, I mean, knock on wood and uh, hopefully the God of Clang doesn't punish me for saying this, but it's pretty stable for what it is, you know? And um, I know a lot of you guys are like, are you crazy tempting Clang this way? I am. Um, but on the flip side, look how cool this thing is. And it collects so much, the hole comes out much bigger. Um, I kind of was hoping that we did hit the iron, but I, my goal is to have these kind of open up, kind of like flower petals and lower just enough to where you can create like a disc around. So you basically get to the layer of let's say iron or whatever you're mining and uh, you can totally scrape that section out. Um, but let's see, should I dare reverse these? Okay, they're opening, right? Oh yeah, oh no! They're going to explode. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, they're going to explode. It's too fast. This is the part that I need to work on, to be honest with you. Um, the thing is, like, you cannot lock it because then it starts turning the chain. And that's when you anger Lord Clang, as you can see here. Ah, uh, come on, buddy. You stop doing that to me. Okay, the rest are, are down. This guy needs to go down. Right? Oh no, he is like in the box. <laughs> I feel lucky this thing didn't explode right now. Oh! See, that's the thing. It kind of. Oh! <laughs> oh, I 
I spoke too soon. I did speak too soon. All right, be right back, take two. All right, so after a quick reload and uh, lots of thought, um, I think that what I'm gonna do in order to get this done here is I'm just gonna let this go maybe, I don't know, maybe about 20 meters or so. We don't need to go super deep for us to test this theory. Now, with uh, the previous example and on that explosion, and I'll add that to the edit, as we saw, what happens with the spin of this rotor here is that when the drills are expanding, if they end up getting caught, it locks up the rotors to where they start twisting. And the problem isn't that they're twisting, but the problem is that eventually these drills will eat through the rock and it will release itself, creating almost like a spring action. And then when they hit the next voxel, that's when they explode, which is cool and all. <laughs> I think that can be resolved. I don't think, actually, I don't think that was uh, Clang's fault, you know, or Clang's fault. It was more my fault. So what I'm going to do here is going to go ahead and start, um, let's go ahead and unlock this rotor on. And uh, I'm going to go ahead actually and reverse this guy just to give it a little bit of uh, room to spin up here. Because again, that's what we don't, that's kind of what we want to avoid is that spring action, right? So making sure that you turn this rotor on before it goes deep enough to the ground, that's pretty crucial here. So as you can see, it's putting a lot of force. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for a moment, just for when it releases here. Oh, off, 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 I meant off. <laughs> okay, so let it let it rise a little bit to where it clears that. Then I'm gonna start spinning it, I think. Are we good now? Yeah, I think we're good now. Now I can go ahead and start reversing this guy back down. And uh, we can actually start doing this. So yeah, I'm gonna let it get down to about, I don't know, like I said, 20 meters or so. And then we're gonna test out this uh, flowering, opening up of the drills here, kind of an action. And uh, so <clears throat> I think the main challenge here is going to be to be able to set up a system with uh, maybe timer blocks or so um, to tell this to be able to open and the the chains come down just enough to where it matches the angle because these will go to a 90 degree angle once they are open right so yeah let's let it get to the 20 meters here and uh and then we're gonna stop it and we are back yes i am going to save it from this point because i learned my lesson so characters over here and I'm controlling the seat and uh, my spectator camera. So everything's going down pretty well here so far. Let's go ahead and uh, s turn on the flower. So as it's going down, I'm just gonna turn it on and just keep an eye on it. I think that might be the best way. As soon as it stops, I reverse it and I lost the drill already. Okay, so point 10 is still too fast. That is the problem with these guys. So let me go ahead and reload one more time and slow them down. Okay, back again. Again, character up there, drill down here. What I wanna do is go ahead and take a look at the flower. And uh, if I did this correctly, they are all facing the right way. So what I wanna do is slow down this, oh no. We gotta go ahead and uh, slow down this velocity here. Let's do uh, 0 0.5. No, zero five. Now let's do real slow. Like I want it to just be slow. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start opening it again. All right, actually before that, let's go ahead and do a save really quickly. Let's say we just hit the iron over there. Let's go ahead and do a number eight, which is the flower spread. And uh, it's at 0 0.1 right now. I wonder if I could just stop this rotor, the number five. So it'll stay at the same height for a little bit. And let's see how these drills behave. Let's go a little bit closer. Give me some light. So let's take a look here, actually. You see, like, this stopping is the problem. So let's go ahead and reverse them. 
because it feels like they're opening up a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little more and keep them going so let them go a little bit lower the thing is to make sure they don't hit the sides there that's why I put the catwalks on the side of the drills because I knew they were gonna take some impact so let me go ahead and stop the drill I'm sorry the chain so we're not lowering right now um, let's take a look at the flower and these guys are they moving are they doing what they're supposed to velocity 0 per 1 current angle negative 80 and it doesn't feel like it's moving do I have to do something a little more dramatic here nope nope that's exactly what I didn't want to do <laughs> All right, take a hundred and seventy two. All right, here we are. So the chain is not lowering. It is still spinning and I have not done any of the flower yet. So let's go ahead and take the flower. And right now our velocity is at one. So let's maybe go to 0 0.5, 0 0.05. Let's try that and see what happens here. Is that still too fast? Because that's the main thing. I think I'm going to go to 0 0.03 just to be on the safe side. But as you can see, it is spreading out. So let's go ahead and drop it to number 5 a little bit. Just a little bit. Kind of want to get the catwalks to the angle there and let it open up a little bit more. Let it do its thing. Okay, so yeah. There you go. That's kind of the idea of what I wanted to do here. Let's drop it a little bit more. Give me a full spin's worth. It is wobbling all over the place. Now I gotta keep an eye on the on the on the flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse it just to release a little pressure, let it drill around just a little bit more. Just to do its thing. Because now they're gonna push up a little bit as they're closing. Right, because they're getting that bottom part there. And once they make themselves enough room here, I'm going to start opening them out again. I know it's hard to see because they're so slow, but the flower is opening and closing very slightly right now. It looks like. And I do have the rotors, I'm sorry, the hinges on the flower set up to uh, maximum, minimum. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, open them up again before we start dropping. And I think I'm going to drop just a little bit more while they're opening now. So this is the tricky part here, basically, is what I'm kind of having the hardest part putting this together. If it was just a static drill, okay, it goes down, gets to the layer, it picks up whatever it does. Let's go ahead and stop number five here. I think I went a little bit too low. Let's raise it just a little bit. Um, you know, you get to that layer and, and you're good. Um, you know, you get that much whatever that you're farming and um, and that's that with this my idea was to get more out of that layer by being here um, you know maybe without spectator camera if you're doing this in survival it might be a little bit tougher to do that um, but right now we're just testing um, I do want to set it up to where it does this where you can do it in survival um, maybe with a camera so you can see down here or something of that nature. But see like that's starting to bug again. So it's starting to put pressure on the chain so I'm going to close it up again so it doesn't do too much pressure. And that's the part that, how do you tell a timer block to do that? To watch out for that twist, you know what I mean? I don't know. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. This is the challenge I kind of wanted to show you guys. That I've been having. Um, I'd love to see what you guys come up with it. Um, if you want to participate in this, uh, please leave me a link of a video or some pictures, whatever you put together. Um, I'd love to check it out. Um, and, uh, you know, if we find a solution, I'd love to put it on the next video here and uh, show it to everybody so we can all build cool things like this. And, uh, you know, experience this game to a, a whole other level here. So thanks so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, and uh, don't forget to like, it does help me out. 
Uh, I'm just the little guy here talking about a video game, nothing big, but thanks for all the support. You guys have been awesome uh, on, the on the last video of the smaller version of this, the, the dangling jewels. Man, you guys hit that like button and you guys hit that subscribe button. It was awesome, great feeling. Thank you so very much for all that. Um, let me go ahead and lower this just a little bit more. I am gonna get to the end of this. I want to. Uh, I am gonna show you guys uh, this flower completely open. So let's go ahead and stop that again. You see, like once it finagles itself, like it'll work. It'll work out like that, and you can collect a whole bunch more out of that layer that you normally wouldn't. And not only that, it dangles around too, so it hits those side walls even more and more and it explodes itself. Let's go ahead and close. That was one of the, only one of the catwalks. But you see what I mean? Once it twists, it starts gaining speed and um, that's no good. I'm kind of digging the motion that it's doing though. Look, look at what it's kind of creating over here. It's a little weird. I can see that being the beginning of a base or something. You start adding hallways to the side and create an underground base with one of these. That'd be kind of cool. And then you could put a connector on one of these ends here and transfer everything down there. That'd be pretty interesting. What'd you guys say? All right, I, uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and lower this a little bit more. Okay, right about there, and let's go ahead and start opening that flower again. Just a little bit more. So basically the trick is to get the hinges below the level of that layer there where the where the drills first started digging at. I think this should be almost there as far as lowering it down. Man, this is kind of exciting. Honestly, I did not think this would work. I mean, it's still pretty shaky and there's some work to be done here, but it's doing its thing. I think I'm gonna lower it just a little bit more. It seems like it's found like a little groove now. Like it's kind of just going, see that? It seems a lot more stable than before. So yeah guys, I feel pretty satisfied with it. I feel like it's opened enough. Um, initially I kind of wanted to go 90 degrees with it, but I think this is a good enough spread to where you get enough materials and you don't risk too much. So I feel this video has gone long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also let me know what you think about this on the comments. So thank you very much for watching, guys. You guys have a great one.